The Colorado gay nightclub shooter is apparently non-binary, and the media and Democrats are utterly baffled. Anthony Fauci gives a final press conference lecturing Americans yet again on masks and vaccines, and the NHL goes woke. I'm Ben Shapiro. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Thousands of my listeners have already secured their network data. Join them at expressvpn.com slash Ben. We'll get to all the news in just one moment. First, you're spending a ton of money every month on companies that hate you and are charging you too much for your phone coverage. It's that simple. There's no reason to give that much money to Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. You're spending over 80 bucks a month for wireless services. You could get the same service on the same network at PureTalk for about half the price. With PureTalk, you can get talk, text, and data that's just as fast for about 30 bucks a month. Those other guys are making you pay for thousands of retail stores you don't actually go to or perks you don't use and data that you're not actually using. PureTalk, on the other hand, wants to keep you happy. That's why they've invested in a U.S.-based customer service team. It's also why they give you so many more data options, because why exactly would they charge you for data you don't need? I switched over to Pure Talk because I like supporting veteran-owned U.S.-based companies that have my best interests at heart and aren't charging me for data I'm not using. It took me less than 10 minutes to make the switch. I'm saving a ton of money. Go to puretalk.com, enter code Shapiro, save 50% off your very first month of coverage. That's puretalk.com, promo code Shapiro. Get 50% off your very first month. Again, puretalk.com, promo code Shapiro. Get 50% off your very first month of coverage. Also, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you've heard me talk about my Helix Sleep mattress, right? It's the thing that keeps me sane and rational. But also, that's not the only place I nap because my kids wake me up at all times of the morning and in the evening. And that means that if I can grab some quick shut-eye at like two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm gonna jump on that all-form couch and take a quick nap. Love my all-form sofa. Helix has launched a new company. It's called Allform. They're already making the best sofas in the game. Allform sofas are American-made, easy to assemble, scratch and stain resistant, stylish and comfortable. Allform sofas are modern yet timeless seating pieces that come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and configurations. They're easily customizable. They cost a fraction of what you would pay in traditional stores. Allform sofas are designed to grow with the way you live. The Allform sofa collection has got everything from armchairs and love seats to an eight-seat sectional, so you can find the perfect piece for any space. Plus, all form sofas are shipped directly to your door and can be assembled in just a few minutes. No tools necessary. I love my Allform sofa. It's also modular, by the way. You can add pieces to it as your family grows. They're really durable, which is great, so my kids can't even ruin the couch. To find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash Ben. Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Ben. Step up your sofa game today. Well, the narrative was fully formed. Fully formed. As soon, literally the moment that there was a shooting at a gay nightclub in Colorado Springs, Colorado, the entire legacy media infrastructure, every major Democrat in America decided this was the fault of Libs of TikTok and Tucker Carlson and Matt Walsh and Chris Rufo and me and any other American who did not like Drag Queen Story Hour or who was not in favor of same-sex marriage or who believed that transing the children is a bad thing. It was all our fault. It was our fault. It was your fault. If you believe that there's anything wrong with, with any of those things, then it is your fault if a deranged individual goes to a gay nightclub and shoots a bunch of people. Now, the narrative was crap from the beginning. It's crap because unless you are inciting violence, actively calling for people to do violence to other human beings, you are not responsible for the violence that they do. This has been the rule in free speech for literally ever. And yet, the left jumped out in front of the story before they even bothered to wait for any facts at all and said that essentially the uptick in sentiment against the transing of the children was responsible for a mass shooting at a gay nightclub because this is the game that they always play. It doesn't matter whether the person was deranged. It doesn't matter if the person had a long history of red flags that were ignored by police. It doesn't matter whether the square peg fits in the round hole or not. The narrative is always and forever. My political opponents are responsible for murder. Therefore, there must be a censorship regime. That was the narrative. Now, all they had to do is wait for the facts. And it's important to remember this. This shooting did not happen all that long ago. The shooting happened just days ago. All the members of the media had to do was wait for the facts, which is, in fact, their job. Now, we, I understand we have a media infrastructure that rewards people who are first and wrong rather than rewarding people who wait and are right. That is just how our media infrastructure generally works now. If you jump on a story and it turns out that you're wrong 90% of the time, but 10% of the time you are right, we remember the 10% of the time that you're right, and we forget the 90% of the time you're wrong because you were first, and that's the really important thing. And so there really is no disincentive for members of the media to create fully formed narratives completely in coincidence with democratic priorities, and then to just run those out there. Because after all, if they're wrong, we'll just memory hole it. Three months from now, nobody's going to remember that the media made a complete mockery of themselves. Nobody's going to remember that all the media had to do was wait for a few days. Now, what am I talking about here? What I'm talking about here is the news this morning that the Colorado Club shooting suspect is non-binary according to his attorneys. Poof goes the narrative. It's gone. Watch how fast this story gets memory hold now. 
According to Axios.com, the public defenders for the suspect in the mass shooting at a Colorado Springs LGBTQ nightclub said in a Tuesday night court filing obtained by a New York Times reporter, their client is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. And the media are confused and bewildered and puzzled because after all, this throws a wrench into all of their greatest hopes and desires regarding the narrative. Now remember, from the very beginning, it was perfectly obvious this person was deranged. How did we know this person was deranged? Not just because they committed a mass shooting, which is deranged activity, but also because we knew within hours that this person had been arrested last year for threatening his mother with a gun and threatened to blow her up with a homemade bomb before the police arrested him and then didn't take away his guns. So that would be cr pretty good evidence of, of being a deranged, violent individual who should have been on the police radar, should, should it not? But we were told that didn't matter. There were full op-eds in the New York Times saying this was not about mental illness. This was not about deranged violence. This is about nothing except for the broad spectrum narrative that the right is evil and must be silenced. And we need to shut it down, shut it all down. We need to, we need to stop Elon Musk from opening up Twitter to evil nefarious folk who disagree with us. We need to make sure that everyone we disagree with on YouTube gets demonetized. We have to make sure that the language of the right is never heard again, because that's the only way to assure that gay people don't just get randomly shot at a nightclub. That was the narrative. And they ran with it. And boy, did they run with it. It has been nonstop blanket narrative coverage since the shooting. And now it turns out that the suspect is saying that he is non-binary. And this puts the media in a huge pickle. It puts the media in a pickle for a couple of reasons. One, it turns out the narrative is not quite as simple as they thought it was. Two, they now cannot claim that this person is mentally ill or deranged because after all, they've created a system in which you declaring that you are a non-binary human, a thing that does not exist. We are all members of biological sexes. That you declaring that you are non-binary actually makes you more sane. That in some ways, you saying that you are non-binary, what that is, that is the true you. You're not allowed to doubt anything. That, what the shooter says now must be taken as absolute verifiable truth. You have to take at face value this person saying that he is a they, them. You must, because after all, you must respect the pronouns. They've created this pathetic logical box for themselves. Now, for the rest of us who live in the normal world, this is always a very clear story. Deranged individual goes and does something evil. Boom, end of story. And then when the person goes to prison and suggests that he is a member of a they, them species that does not exist, you say, oh, well, because this person obviously is a deranged individual with mental illness. Like, that. okay, all fits in there. But now the left is confused and they're bewildered and they're puzzled. And they don't know what to do. And so some of the ways they've been reacting, quite, quite fascinating. So Ben Collins, who's just the worst actor in all of this, he is the senior reporter at NBC News, who's blamed literally the entire right for everything that has happened right here. He, he's appeared on television basically saying that if you oppose Drag Queen Story Hour, which in fact is a wonderful, wonderful thing, he said this on TV, that Drag Queen Story Hour is wonderful. It's where, it's where little kids get to meet drag queens. Why would that possibly be? Why would you oppose that? Why would that be a bad thing? Well, he was also on your TV yesterday, was Ben Collins, suggesting that the Nazis are coming. That, that really what this is about, it's the evil people at Breitbart who are calling for death upon gay, lesbian, trans people. He can't provide any evidence that that's happening, but, you know, it's really, the Nazis are coming, guys. And you know, the Nazis, they really didn't like gender non-binary people. It was, it, so, so if you say that there is no such thing as a non-binary gender, if you say that boys are boys and girls are girls, basically you're a Nazi. And because you're a Nazi, people are shooting up gay nightclubs. This is Ben Collins yesterday. There is a, a, a long history of this. You know, I, I talked to uh, this, this woman named Jennifer Mercier, who's a rhetoric professor at Texas A&M. And uh, she was telling me about this thing called hate objects that come up in, you know, pre-fascist governments, where they take people they describe as degenerates, right? And, and you know, before Nazi Germany was, in fact, gay, and, gay people, people who played with, uh, you know, gender conformity. Uh, and they say they are contributing to the downfall of society. They are the reason that, you know, things cost more, that the crops aren't coming up, right? Um, we have been through this in the past. It's very dark. Okay, this pathetic person, he's a terrible reporter. And again, he spent, just blanketed himself on TV, talking about how the right was to blame for the shooting. It was Nazi Germany. It was Breitbart. It was Tucker Carlson. It was all of them. Well, this morning, he issues a couple of updates on the Colorado Spring story. Oh, just a few updates, you know, it was last night. A few updates. The suspect is requesting to go by they, them, according to court docs provided to the New York Times. The Colorado suspect was 15 when they requested a name change. So first of all, I love that the entire media has to immediately shift mode and respect the pronouns of a mass murderer. There are those of us who are like, no, that's a dude. And you guys are like, no, 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 we got to respect his pronouns. We got to. 
I mean, sure, he just murdered five gay people and injured another 25 people. But the important thing, he's a they. This person's harassment by edgelords online was thoroughly documented on the hate site Encyclopedia Dramatica, which outlined a harassment campaign repeatedly calling this person a pedophile. They accrued some of those posts and mocked the person's grandmother's GoFundMe to send the person to Japan. I'm studiously avoiding saying the name of the shooter because this is something we do on the show to prevent mass shootings, something no one in the media apparently will do. We on this show and over on our site, over at Daily Wire, we do not mention the names of mass shooters because it gives them exactly the sort of notoriety and glory they're looking for. No one in the mass legacy media will do this. No one. It's amazing. And then they'll blame us, obviously. Encyclopedia Dramatica, the hate site that compiled years of records of online bullying of the Colorado Springs suspect, updated the page when they realized that the shooter had an entry for years, adding that this person, quote, shot up a gay bar because he was tired of all the harassment. Okay, so the narrative is now shifting from Ben Collins in real time. So now the shooter, he's sympathetic to. Now the shooter had a rough childhood. Everybody was bullying this non-binary person. And that's probably why. So as it turns out, according to Ben Collins, the right is to blame because this person was a disciple of the right with no evidence, by the way, none. I mean, the, the media tried to trot out not the relevant fact that this person was a psychologically disturbed human being with violent tendencies. They didn't care about that. They cared that his grandfather was a Republican politician in California or something, which is an amazing way to journalism. I mean, that's just high level journalism. Well, you know, we don't know anything about this person, but you know what his grandfather was. Ah, what? His grandfather was? It, like, Excuse me, my grandfather, like, ran, a, one grandfather ran a clothing store and one advised people on speech writing at, like, AT&T. What does that have to do with anything? But apparently that was the relevant fact. The relevant fact is that his granddad wore a MAGA hat one time, not that he was a psychologically disturbed individual arrested by the cops last year. And the other relevant fact, of course, is that this person had to be a member of the right without any evidence whatsoever. No evidence. And then the evidence comes in that the person actually is non-binary because this is what the person now claims and apparently has been claiming. And uh, and their response is, well, probably if they are non-binary, they are non-binary. It's because of bullying. So it's still the right. So either this person was bullied by the right into shooting up a gay club or the person was a disciple of the right, so shot up a gay club. Or maybe your narratives aren't so comfy cozy. Maybe they aren't so bad. And maybe you guys manufacture narratives because you want the outcome. You want the censorship. You want people you disagree with silenced. Only the left does this in modern America. Only the left immediately jumps on instances of violence and suggests that half the country has to be shut up on controversial public issues, including transing of the children. Only you do this. It's nasty and it's cynical and it's disgusting. And you violate your most basic obligation as journalists when you do this. Because again, you guys are the fact finders, right? You're above it. You're supposed to be. The, you guys are the, are the defenders of the American Republic. You guys keep telling us this. You journalismists, you. You keep telling us that you're, this is your job is to bring information to the How could anyone label you an enemy of the people? How could anyone say that sort of stuff? No one should say that sort of stuff. You guys are objective journalism experts who, who focus first on the facts. That's all you care about is just the fact, except that you don't. Except you don't give a bleep about the fact. You care about the narrative. And so when you jump two feet first on a rake and it smacks you directly between the eyes, that's a you problem, guys. You made this happen for yourselves. All you had to do was report the fact as they developed, and you couldn't. You couldn't even wait long enough to do it. And by the way, you think that if they had waited for 48 hours, and it turns out that the guy had some manifesto online where he said he was a big fan of Tucker Carlson, you think that you wouldn't have had that conversation? You still would have had the same conversation. You just would have had actual facts to back you. But you had no facts to back you, and you jumped anyway, because you don't care. The narrative comes first. The facts come second. That's all that matters to you. And eventually, will, will Ben Collins lose his job? Of course he won't. Of course you won't. Will anyone in the media who jumped on this lose their job over this? Of course not. We'll all just forget about it. It'll all go away. Well, and, and a year from now, they will talk about how they are the objective journalismers who love the fact, don't care about narrative. They, they report without fear or favor that all they care about is bringing you the crucial information you need in order to form your views. But let us not forget. Let us not forget what's happened over the course of the last few days. Literally yesterday, yesterday, this narrative imploded on them like the Hindenburg. Literally yesterday, the entire legacy media, all of it, was doing this routine. So Nicole Wallace over at MSNBC, she was blaming Tucker Carlson for all of this, of course. 
I think, Donna, the, the part of the story that makes people feel like it isn't about them should be thrust under the Klieg lights. I mean, everyone that spreads hate, and there are hopes who were named in the coverage yesterday. I think Tucker Carlson gives a lot of airtime to um, hate for the LGBTQ community. Um, a lot of elected Republicans do as well. And this tragedy um, has not shamed them at all. Okay, by the way, um, I, I should I should note here, there are further updates on the shooter, okay? His upbringing is marked, this is according to the Denver Gazette, by a biological father with a criminal history who dabbled in drugs and worked in the porn industry and a mother with multiple arrests in California and Texas. Also, shortly before he changed his name, the suspected shooter apparently was a target of online bullying and showed signs of fascination with gay culture. Oh, fascinating. Fascinating. Really well done, but, but it's Tucker Carlson probably. It was Tucker Carlson's fault. That, that's probably it. Meanwhile, MSNBC's Donna Edwards did the same thing, blaming Tucker Carlson. I have real questions about these platforms like Twitter that continue to amplify and allow this kind of hateful language that then plays in uh, to violence happening. I think, you know, I mean, it has to it has to stop. And, and these platforms have to bear some responsibility for their role in contributing to it. And I don't even have much to say about a Tucker Carlson or anybody else who lifts up violence and glorifies violence against a community um, and then says hands off when it comes to violence that actually does happen in that that community. They all did it. They all did it. The entire legacy media, virtually all of them, without exception, and not just members of the legacy media. I mean, it was lots of, le I mean, yeah, Kara Swisher, the world's worst tech journalist, just an awful, awful censorship-driven tech journalist, supposed tech journalist over at uh, the New York Times, calling out the quote-unquote year-long propaganda from the right against the LGBTQ community for what happened in Colorado Springs, of course. More than two dozen people were injured. At least one club patron attacked and subdued the shooter, pinning him to the floor until the police arrived. Police now have a suspect in custody. He sounds you know, problematic and on lists and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, the right wing is saying, don't politicize this right after the event. And I think I shall politicize it because Please. this is a year of propaganda from the right that smeared the LGBTQ and especially trans community as groomers. Mm -hmm. All this legislation, all this hatred, it's, you know, Lauren Boebert saying she feels this is very upsetting, has been right at the forefront of using terms like groomers and pedos around gay people and, and trans people. Um, and Matt Walsh, who is just the most loathsome person I think uh, you've ever got to meet, is immediately saying, oh, that they're trying to castrate young people, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this is one of the more loathsome people in the media. By the way, it is chemical castration when you actually pump sterilizing drugs into young people because they are gender confused, or when you perform surgeries on minors that sterilize them. That is a fact. Okay, but, but Kara Swisher, she had, she had somebody to blame. She had somebody to blame. And that's what mattered most of all. Or, for example, the New York Times. Today, a columnist named Lauren Huff has a piece titled, This Holiday, I'm Going to a Gay Bar. And here is the key section. When I heard about the news about the shooting at Club Q, an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. I couldn't help but think of the rhetoric spewed by those like James Dobson. That's James Dobson's fault, guys. Focus on the family. They're to blame. We know what we're up against. We heard it growing up in church and at home. We heard the words they use in polite company about loving the sinner and hating the sin. We heard the words they'd used when they'd been listening to Christian radio or their actual minister or Rush Limbaugh or Fox News about abominations and predators in bathrooms and groomers on the internet and the words they use when they've had one too many, the names they call those who could be our friends, who could be us. The words we heard and were taught and were forced to read. A whole lot of those words came out of Colorado Springs, the headquarters of Focus on the Family. Ah, it's Focus on the Family, according to this columnist for the New York Times. And by the way, it's not just the members of the journalism and op-ed community, right? From objective journalists to the op-ed community. It's also your favorite politicians. So Pete Buttigieg, Jedj, the, the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, who is the failing secretary of transportation, but also is gay, which means that he's amazing at his job. Pete Buttigieg, he was out there and he was making the same point. The idea is that this shooting could be laid at the at the feet of all of his political opponents. So you think the political discourse that's going on now is a contributing factor to this kind of violence? You can't target a group to be feared and to be hated. A group, by the way, that never did anything to you, but is politically convenient to attack. And then act surprised when 
a, a disturbed person or who knows, goes out and follows that through with physical violence. There has always been a relationship between the social and political demonization of a group and that group's vulnerability to being physically attacked. Oh, so, oh, okay. It's, it probably has evidence to back that, right? No, no, he, ha he has no evidence to back that at all. But he did tweet about it as well, just to make clear that this is what Pete Buttigieg thinks. The Secretary of Transportation of your federal government, he tweeted the same thing, quote, if you're a politician or media figure who sets up the LGBTQ community to be hated and feared, not because any of us ever harmed you, but because you find it useful, don't you dare act surprised when this kind of violence follows. Don't you dare act surprised. Ah, why it's almost as though you had an agenda and the agenda is that we have to support and celebrate everything that you want us to support and celebrate or you're gonna blame us for murder. Well, I'm sorry that your narrative fell apart. I'm sorry that, I'm sorry reality happened to you. I'm sorry that you guys decided that you were going to jump on a narrative because it was convenient and because you want it promoted. And not just convenient, useful to you. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, the holidays are the best time of the year. But if you want to enjoy them to the fullest, you need to get your best sleep every single night. It's easier than it sounds. All you need are the softest, most luxurious organic cotton sheets from Bull and Branch. Let me just tell you, Bull and Branch sheets, they are the best sheets in the game. We gave away all of our other sheets because, frankly, compared to Bull and Branch, they're terrible. Bull and Branch sheets are amazing. And it's not just Bone Branch sheets. Bone Branch has these wonderful blankets. They have ex like pretty much everything you need for your bed, Bone Branch can do for you. They are fantastic. Bone Branch sheets actually soften with every single wash cycle. They come in nine neutral colors and all mattress sizes. Their signature sheets come wrapped in a beautiful holiday gift box. They do make an excellent gift for family and friends. Bone and Branch gives you a 30-night risk-free trial with free shipping and returns on all orders. You're not going to want to return them. I mean, honestly, like we got rid of, I'm serious, all of our other sheets in the house. Give the gift of a better night's sleep this holiday season with Bull and Branch. Take advantage of their Black Friday sale, 25% off your first set of sheets and free shipping when you use promo code Shapiro at bullandbranch.com. That's bullandbranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. Promo code Shapiro offer ends November 27th. Also, if you're running a business and the only way to get in touch with you is via a phone call, you're probably losing people. Podium is the business solution for you. It gives small businesses the tools to compete with the convenience offered by bigger businesses. So here's the thing. Have you ever picked up a spam call? Like ever? Now it comes up on your phone as spam. You're never gonna pick it up. But how often have you responded to a text from like a business? You have a reservation, a dinner reservation, you get a text. Or you have a reminder for a doctor's appointment, you get a text. If you are not using text for the basis of your business, you're doing it totally wrong. From healthcare providers to plumbers, over 100,000 businesses are texting with customers through Podium. Customers love the convenience. Businesses love the results. One car dealer sold a $50,000 truck in just four text messages. A jeweler sold a $5,000 ring in coordinated curbside pickup all through text. With Podium's all-in-one inbox, you can do more than just chat. Get more online reviews by sending an easy-to-use link. Collect payments fast from anywhere. And send marketing campaigns that actually get a response, all by sending a quick text. See how Podium can grow your business? Watch a demo today at Podium.com slash Shapiro. That's Podium.com slash Shapiro. Podium. Let's grow. Also, I already talked about the all form sofa earlier on the show. Let me just tell you, Helix sleep mattresses, just as good as ever. I've had my Helix sleep mattress for years now. Love it. I sleep like a baby, even in the midst of the busiest season of the year. A mattress should never be a one-size-fits-all solution because your body is not one-size-fits-all. Your mattress should not be either. Helix has a sleep quiz. It matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you want to buy a mattress made for somebody else? I took that Helix quiz. I was matched with a firm but breathable model because I tend to heat up a lot at night. And if the bed is too soft, I get back pain. Helix solves that problem for me. Go to helixsleep.com slash Ben. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. Find the perfect mattress for your body and sleep type. Your mattress is going to come to your door shipped for free. Helix has a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you're going to. Helix has over 12,000 five-star reviews for a limited time. Helix is offering up to 350 bucks off all mattress orders plus two free pillows for our listeners. That is a fantastic deal. Take advantage of it at helixsleep.com slash Ben with Helix. Better sleep starts right now. Okay, so the reaction in the media, this says it all. So CNN had to finally report this this morning. And Allison Camerata was reporting that the shooter in this case, in his court filings, says he is they and that he's non-binary. Now in this clip, the, there, there'll be a couple of points where you hear... That is the that is CNN not doing what we do here at Daily Wire on the show. That is the that is CNN saying the shooter's name. We don't do that on the show, as I've explained already, because, again, we don't wish to give notoriety to people who desperately seek notoriety. It is just another incentive for them to go out and commit shootings like this. Okay, but there's pretty good social science on that, because, again, we care about mass shootings, but apparently members of the media very often care not. Let's say, they don't care enough to either wait for the facts on them or to stop using the names of the shooters, glorifying them. In any case. Allison Camerata reports on this. 
And you can see how upset they are that the narrative just collapsed in on them like a dying star. Attorneys for the accused shooter say in new court filings tonight that the suspect now identifies as non-binary. In a footnote to a motion asserting legal privileges, the public defenders say, quote, is non-binary. They use they, them pronouns. And for the purposes of all formal filings will be addressed as. So in other words, not Mr. or Ms. Joining me now, CNN political commentator Errol Lewis, also back with me, Al Franken and Joe Walsh. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, that's not anything that we had heard from his background. You know, people have been looking into his background and uh, I don't know if anybody here. Are you guys lawyers? I no. mean, you know, I don't know if the, I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, that, that's what he's now saying. I love that they're all puzzled. What, what, what are we supposed to say about this? And then she gets to, is she allowed to doubt the person's non-binary identity? By the way, I love when she says, well, we have no evidence. I mean, people were looking into his background and we couldn't find any evidence that he did. First of all, you didn't wait for evidence for five seconds before you decided to label this person a right-wing fanatic. So there's that. Don't pretend to give a bleep about evidence. You don't care. You're just upset because your narrative died. You're just upset because the thing blew up like the top of Nakatomi Plaza at the end of Die Hard. Like, it, it, that's all you care about. And but here's something else. You and the media, you don't get to do it. You don't get to do it. You don't get to say, well, you know, there was no evidence until five seconds ago. This person was non-binary. We were searching. We were searching. I, but I was, I was told that the minute that someone declared by your standards that somebody was non-binary, we all have to assume that they were non-binary forever. We're not allowed to mention. We're not allowed to dead name the person. In fact, you using this person's dead name would be an act of bigotry by you. Welcome to the world that you've created for yourselves. If narratives matter more than facts, then you don't have to worry about things like whether this person identified as non-binary 30 seconds ago or not. This was always a very clear story. A disturbed human being went and did an evil thing. It was always clear. And all you had to do was wait for the facts, and you couldn't. Now the story is about your malfeasance, and it's about the cynical garbage that was pumped out there by Democratic top politicians suggesting that anybody who didn't vote for the Respect for Marriage Act or anybody who wants to ban the mutilation of minors in their state is somehow complicit in a murderous attack. It's about you guys now. Okay, that's what this is about, because that is a broad national story. You want to talk about broad national things that affect everybody? How about the coverage of the news? How about politicians saying that half the country should be silenced? How about your political leaders telling you that you're a bigot because you don't like drag queens gyrating around in front of children? And if you oppose it, then probably you want people shot. That's a national news story. And that does affect everybody. And pretending that it doesn't is a joke. It's amazing, amazing stuff. And meanwhile, speaking of our great moral leaders over in the media. So today there is a, another horrific bombing. There this is the first bus bombing in Jerusalem. It's happened since I think 2016, but the first in Israel since 2019. A, a Canadian and American citizen apparently uh, was killed. He's a 16-year-old boy named Arya Shekopek. He was a Canadian kid. He was just going to, to school that day on the bus, and he was murdered by a Palestinian terrorist. 19 other people have been injured, including an American citizen. I don't expect that the Biden administration will launch some sort of FBI investigation into who actually conducted this and whether there was complicity from the Palestinian Authority or Hamas. We send hundreds of millions of dollars to the Palestinian Authority, and, we've, and we send financial aid to Hamas as well, by the way. But um, i just like to point out here that our, our, our clear-eyed members of the media, they really are quite moral and amazing. So first you have members of the media who suggest this is an attack on quote-unquote Israelis. First of all, it was an attack on Jews. It was directed against Jews. And many of the people who were injured are not actually Israeli citizens. Americans are Canadians. But beyond that, it was just yesterday that Whoopi Goldberg, our great moral leader over at The View, Literally questioning on national television whether Hamas and the Taliban are terrorist groups. After all, terrorism is in the eye of the beholder. She tweeted something comparing the U.S., Israel, Hamas, and the Taliban as all mm -hmm. terrorist organizations. And she has maybe way more knowledge and experience in the very complicated Middle Eastern relations. But I did find that being on a foreign committee and comparing the country to a terrorist, a known terror, those are organized terrorist communities that, not Israel, but Hamas and the Taliban. That it depends on who you talk to. Right. Well, I mean, those are, that's how they're recognized as, as, as terrorist and organizations. But it does depend on, it, it, on who you yeah. talk to. Well, they're recognized in this country. Right.
It depends on who you talk to, says Whoopi Goldberg. By the way, what they're talking about there is Ilhan Omar at one point in a tweet lumped together Hamas, the Taliban, Israel, and the United States. Okay, and Whoopi Goldberg, because she has to defend Ilhan Omar, because she's a member of the radical intersectional left, she said, well, are Hamas and the Taliban terrorists? Yes, they're terrorist groups. Yes, they're terrorist groups. Uh, I, should, I should just note here that Whoopi Goldberg has had no such compunction in the past about labeling her fellow Americans terrorists. It was just a few months ago that she labeled House Republicans domestic terrorists. When the chairman of the Judiciary Committee says that Antifa is a myth, that is giving cover. How long until mainstream Christianity is deemed domestic extremism? The problem is not that the Republican Party is racist. It's that the Republican Party won't call out the racist in its myths. When did Washington really get to be a place where stopping domestic terrorism is divisive? I guess when they're part of the problem. <laughs> when the domestic <laughs> terrorists are voting on the bill. Yeah. Yeah. When the domestic terrorists, got it, guys? According to Whoopi Goldberg, Hamas, the Taliban, not terrorists, Republicans who vote against an overbroad bill targeting quote unquote domestic extremism that may wrap into it a bunch of people who just disagree. Those people are, are the real domestic terrorists. Slow clap, slow clap for Whoopi Goldberg and the rest of the geniuses over at The View. Uh, a woman so brilliant that she literally believes everyone on earth is racist except for Hitler. Remember, she once suggested that the Holocaust was not racist because Jews are white people. Okay, meanwhile, Anthony Fauci did his final press conference as a member of the federal administration yesterday. And it was a, a tearful moment for all involved. There, there were tears, there was laughter. Uh, there was a weird incident where people actually tried to ask him a tough question and Corinne Jean-Pierre jumped in front of that question like a bodyguard taking a bullet. Uh, it began with Corinne Jean-Pierre praising Anthony Fauci as one of our great public servants who had completely blown everything during the pandemic, but apparently he did an amazing job, according to Corinne Jean-Pierre. Whether it be HIV AIDS, Ebola, or COVID-19, for close to four decades and under seven Republican and Democratic presidents, Dr. Fauci has always led with the science <laughs> and our country is stronger and healthier because of his leadership. Amazing. And then Dr. Ashi Shija, who is the current COVID coordinator, he came out and praised Fauci as well because there's nothing I love better than people on the public payroll as bureaucrats praising one another. It's great. I urge you to visit vaccines.gov <laughs> to find the location where you can easily get an updated vaccine. And please do it as soon as possible. Thank you. Well, hard to follow Dr. Fauci, who I would argue has been the most important, consequential public servant in the United States in the last half century and a leader and a role model for so many of us. So, Tony, thank you. What, what a leader and what a role model, a person who blew it along every step of the way, who flip-flopped on every major issue, and then who posed himself as the science if you doubted any of the things that he was saying. By the way, he said a bunch of stuff that wasn't particularly accurate yesterday, did Anthony Fauci. So first, there was this incident that was pretty amazing where a reporter demanded that Anthony Fauci actually answer some questions about the origins of the virus. Now, Anthony Fauci has been wildly incurious about the origins of the COVID virus in the first place. The, the evidence suggests at this point that there is a significant possibility, if not probability, that the Wuhan virus was originally developed in a Chinese lab, that it was essentially a piece of gain of function research that got loose because of bad protocols. What we do know is that the Chinese government then covered it up probably since October. And that's not me, that's Scott Gottlieb, who's a moderate former head of the FDA. In his book, he talks specifically about how China essentially hid this thing for months and months and months while it ran wild throughout Wuhan and then eventually infected the entire world, killing probably four or five million people. Okay, but Anthony Fauci has been questioned significantly about the beginnings of the Wuhan virus because, after all, he's been an advocate of gain-of-function research to the point where the NIH was actually giving grants to labs in China to do gain-of-function research. And if those grants weren't the ones that actually led to the gain-of-function research that led to COVID, money is fungible. And being part of the broader project is kind of a problem. Now, again, Anthony Fauci has been wildly incurious about the origins of the virus. He just keeps saying over and over that it was a, a wet market that, that drove all of this. The evidence there is dicey at best. The White House is like, we're not even answering questions about this. You stop attacking Anthony Fauci by asking him actual questions. Stop that right now. 
Um, but, but she's only, lesson, she's only lesson, lesson, great question. Not being no, she's not being a good You ask your question, you should allow her to ask some questions. She's Jeremy. not having a valid question, Dr. Fauci, on the origin of COVID-19. It is not, it is not your turn. No, it is not your turn. You can't be the press briefing. You need to call from people across the room. She has a valid question. She's asking about the origin of COVID-19. I hear the question. Dr. Fauci is the best person to answer. I hear your question, but we're not doing this the way you want it. This is a disrespectful. It is. I'm done, Simon. I'm done. I'm Simon. I'm done. I'm done with you right now. I'm done with you right now. Oh, like a school marm. That's, that's uh, solid stuff right there. You might, uh, wait. I thought that was an attack on the press. If Kaylee McEnany had said, "I'm done with you right now. I'm not going to answer your questions. You're being rude right now," then it was the end of the world. You recall that Jim Acosta actually did this during a press conference with Donald Trump or somebody took the microphone away, and this was the end of the republic. We have the White House press secretary telling people they can't ask Dr. Fauci questions about the origins of the virus. I'm done with you. We're not doing it your way. And, um, and that, apparently, according to the press, is just fine with them. Thank you, sir or madam. May, may I have another? We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, I have to tell you about my office chair. My office chair, it is a gift from the gods who's made by angels, forged in Valhalla, X-chair. Talking about X chair. X chair's biggest sale of the year is here. You don't have any excuse not to get yourself an X chair. With a deal this good, you could get X chairs for everybody on your Christmas list. X chair is offering up to 600 bucks off, including a free heat and massage unit now through Cyber Monday. X chair, it is the king of office chairs, nay, the emperor of office chairs. From the minute you sit down in an X chair, your body immediately feels the difference. Don't miss this chance to buy the most luxurious, comfortable, supportive, fashionable, ergonomic, amazing office chair for up to $600 less. You deserve this chair. You've been waiting all year for it. Now you're going to get the deal you've been waiting for. This incredible deal is only available now through Cyber Monday. If you want to save up to 600 bucks on your X chair and receive a free heat and massage unit, go to xchairshapiro.com. That's the letter X, chairshapiro.com. Go to xchairshapiro.com today. Save up to $600 on an X chair. Also, we have huge news for a limited time. Starting this Friday, we've got the Black Friday deal of the year going. 50% off new Daily Wire Plus memberships and gift memberships. 50% off means you are saving big. But how big? Well, like save small businesses from tyrannical governments forcing them to shut for two years big. Save the whole country big. We've had some huge wins in 2022, but 2022 is only the beginning. We're talking about releasing the biggest documentary of the last 10 years, What is a Woman? from Matt Walsh. We're talking about launching Candace Owens' documentary, Ripping Apart BLM. We're talking about launching Daily Wire Plus, bringing Jordan Peterson on board. We're talking about kids' content. We are talking about a lawsuit against the federal government to stop the OSHA vax mandate. We're talking about investigative reporting that actually helped turn the Virginia governor's race. And we got much more great content coming for you, like Jordan Peterson's 16-part biblical series, Exodus. The first two episodes are dropping on Friday, as well as Logos and Literacy and Genesis with a brand new introduction. There's so much other content, too. We're talking about the Ben Shapiro Book Club. We're talking about The Search. We have movies. We have documentaries, so much stuff happening here at Daily Wire Plus. Remember, we're building the future you want to see, and you are an enormous part of that. So again, starting this Friday, get 50% off your new Daily Wire Plus membership at dailywire.com slash subscribe. By the way, if you're already a subscriber, get one for a friend, get one for a family member. 50% off your new Daily Wire Plus membership at dailywire.com slash subscribe starting this Friday. Also, in case you missed it, the newest episode of my book club, Ben Shapiro's Book Club, it's available right now on Daily Wire Plus. Last night, we discussed King Lear by William Shakespeare. Obviously, the most puzzling, troubling, profound, maybe moving of all of William Shakespeare's plays. Go check that out right now. You have to be an all-access member to get in on the fun. Head on over to dailywire.com slash Ben. Become a member and watch right now. Okay, so Anthony Fauci did his final press conference yesterday. And after everybody massaged Anthony Fauci, he actually went out there and talked about what we should do this Thanksgiving. Now, why exactly are folks on the left continuing to, to do, some folks on the left continuing to do this, this COVID emergency garbage? Maybe one reason is because they keep using COVID emergency as a rationale for massive government spending. So Joe Biden yesterday explained that he's actually going to extend the payment pause on student loan debt. Now, he doesn't have the legal rationale to do this. We're not in the middle of an emergency. You can't do this. And now he has also been claiming, by the way, he's claimed two separate justifications for why he gets to pause student loan payments. One is based on like the GI Bill. He's saying people who served in the military, we have the power to suspend their student loans. So for everyone, we should be able to do that. Uh, no, that's not what it means. But here he was explaining uh, by the way, he looks terrible. I'm just going to put that out there. Joe Biden looks like the knight. Uh, Joe Biden looks like the guy at the end of Indiana Jones and uh, the Last Crusade who drinks from the wrong cup. Uh, Joe Biden is starting to look like that. It's 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 not it's not a great look, guys. Anyway, Joe Biden gave you an update. 
Then we're going to suspend student loan emergency measures, emergencies. Folks, I want to give you an update on my student debt relief plan. As Americans continue to recover from the pandemic, my administration has been working to provide student debt relief to millions of working and middle class families across the country. But Republican special interests and elected officials sued to deny this relief, even for their own constituents. But I'm completely confident my plan is legal. But right now, it's on hold because of these lawsuits. We're not going to back down, though, in our fight to give families breathing room. That's why the Department of Justice is asking the Supreme Court of the United States to rule on the case. But it isn't fair to ask tens of millions of borrowers eligible for relief to resume their student debt payments while the courts consider the lawsuit. For that reason, the Secretary of Wait, Education... Wait, so it's about considering the lawsuit or is it an emergency? What's the story? Loan payments while so they just didn't continue doing this. The courts. Great, guys. Man, they love emergencies. And pe people in government, they love emergencies. Emergencies allow you to do everything well past the sell-by date on the emergency because they love power. They just love it. And it never goes away. The power never goes away once you give it to them. All righty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into the NHL, which has declared that trans men are men. Also, Balenciaga, a fashion company pushing child porn. Seriously, if you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.